Hello there, I am JJ Bull and I'm an analyst for Tifo Football and in this video we're going to look at Denmark and how England, who are playing Denmark in the semi-final of the Euros, my word, how they can beat them basically. So we're going to look at the strengths of Denmark, what England needs to be aware of and uh, just point out how much better Denmark might be than some people seem to think they are. Uh, if you want to know more about Denmark and maybe England, maybe like England more than Denmark, I don't care, but if you like either of them, uh, the good place to go, the best place perhaps, is theathletic.com forward slash TIFO football. And there's an offer on just now, which is £1 a month for six months. Uh, obviously, it's a very good deal. And you get all the best writers, basically, of the footballing world there for you to read all the time, whatever you like. So, yeah, do that. Athletic.com forward slash TIFO football. And now we're going to look at uh, the first thing we need to talk about, which is what Denmark's strengths are and what England need to be aware of. When Gareth Southgate is picking his team for this game, uh, he's got to be aware of a few things. The first is that only Italy and Spain have had more shots on goal per game than Denmark. So they take a lot of shots um, and they also score a lot of goals. They also uh, have won the most aerial duels of any team left in the competition. It's 21.8 per game that they win. And that is significantly more than the nearest to them who are still left in the competition, which is England. 21.8 per game for Denmark, and then way down is England on 16 and way below that some other teams. There's a lot of teams that separate them and that is because they are very powerful, tall, strong, they've got a lot of height and if you look at the players like uh, Vestergaard, Kerr, Christensen, uh, Hoiberg even, Delaney, Brathwaite, even Dolberg gets involved, all these guys are big, if not tall, they are strong and that's a real threat from set pieces. And then you've got Stieg Larsson here, who is good at putting uh, balls into the box from corners and free kicks. So that's something they've really got to be aware of. Um, there's a couple other things. So Denmark play in a 3-4-3. And uh, they've done this since, since Christian Eriksen was ruled out of the tournament. They changed to a 3-4-3, and this guy came in, Damsgaard, so he comes in. Now, rather than stick with the 4-2-3 when they'd normally play, because Eriksen was a t is a 10, Damsgaard's come in. Now, Brathwaite can play either on the right or on the left. This can change. They might even change during the game. But uh, Brathwaite is tall and powerful. And so what I think he might, they might do is play him on the left because then he can target this kind of Walker Stones bit over here if England play a four at the back. That's going to be the bit he'd uh, target because you can take Damsgaard over with Maguire and Shaw over this side. Dolberg can come in here and Brathwaite can attack this sort of bit here. That's something to consider because Brathwaite is uh, he's not hugely aggressive, but he's tall and he's hes just big, he's a big lad. So that's something to need to look out for. The other thing is that without Christian Eriksen, Denmark lost their key playmaker, but in has stepped this guy here, Pierre-Emile Hoiberg, who you know from Spurs, where he seems to be quite a competitive, aggressive, defensive midfielder. For Denmark, he has been their secret playmaker. Now, he tends to play in this sort of areas here um, and often gets out to the right. He was a right back in his youth as well. Midfielder, but he's a right back sometimes. He has created 10 chances from open play, which is the same as Kevin De Bruyne. The only player to have created more from open play than uh, Schoiberg is Jordi Alba at Spain. So this is the guy that England are going to want to target because he is creating the majority of Denmark's chances on goal. He set up one of them uh, against Belgium by pressing high. It's another thing he does very well because he is defensively minded and he's very energetic and can win interceptions, blocks, tackles. Pressed Belgium kind of up here from a goal kick, a bad pass out from the back from Jason Denier, turned the ball over and Denmark were able to score from there. Now that's not the concern that England will have. They're not going to be very uh, expansive in the way they play, they'll be conservative. But Hoiberg is going to be someone they need to worry about for what he contributes uh, creatively. Sieg Larsson will uh, attack on the right. And then you've got Mala who's been one of the standouts of the tournament at left back, or left wing back. He's right footed. This is a theme we've seen in the tournament so far. A right footed left back. So it means that he can come into the positions like this. When as soon as I find the football, which is here, Kane was hiding it. As he does, naughty Kane. Mala has the ball here on his right foot. Rather than always trying to get down to the left to put crosses into the box, what Mala does is plays these kind of balls inside and then goes for the... I mean, you can do that with a left foot, obviously, but it's more that the angle of the pass is a lot easier to find these sorts of balls in here for Dahlberg, that sort of thing there. Um, he's also scored uh, on the counter-attack. He got right on the pitch very quickly, came inside, and again, because he's, he's right-footed, comes inside on the break, is able to get into this sort of channel here, and then manages to curl the ball very calmly into the bottom corner. 
That's another threat. Vestergaard, tall, good at defending set pieces. Uh, Kerr, uh, great defender, very solid. Same thing with set pieces. Christensen, and this is another thing that uh, Christensen does and what Denmark do is that when Denmark often build play, what you'll often see is Kerr and Vestergaard will sit as a two. Larsen is the four here, you see it. And then Christensen will move from this right center back position to a defensive midfield position. So it becomes a 4-3-3 very easily. And they can switch that system in game. Um, and this might be one of the things that uh, England consider when they name their midfield, whether they go with a two or three, because Denmark will switch between being a back three like this to being a back four like this. Also, when they do play the three, Christensen will regularly move into these positions in midfield and give an overload. So they get a three like this instead. Rather than being a three, um, I'm gonna draw a line so you see the midfield three. I'm gonna give a yellow line. The midfield three, if he joins in here, obviously on the right, then if he drops back into here, in fact, no, I'll put him in the midfield here, and you see there's a midfield kind of, that's their triangle there, that's the triangle there. So Christensen's going to help link play. It's not that he's a hugely influential creative player, it's that he just helps gain overloads of different parts of the pitch. And that's something else that uh, Southgate needs to think about. The one more thing they're going to worry about is Damsgaard, who has been excellent, coming in for, to replace Eriksen. Um, a very clever player, likes to shoot from range, he's got a brilliant goal from round about this position here where he curled it into the top corner um, in one of the games earlier in the, uh, in the season. The competition is what I mean. So yes, lots of threats from Denmark, also a solid goalkeeper. So now we should look at what Southgate's going to do with that information and how he'll set England up to play them. So England now have a massive game, semi-final, they know their opponent, how do they play? I don't think Southgate's going to stray very far away from the strategy that's worked so far um, in the tournament, which is to be kind of conservative, so not expansive, not attacking, but to be conservative, wait for the opposition to make a mistake, and then exploit that. Bang, that's what you do. It's worked very well so far. A couple of different systems they could use for this game. It could be a 4-3-3 slash a 4-2-3-1. Um, it could also be a 3-4-3, and if it is, and let's pretend Phillips here is a defender, the benefit that would give, as we've mentioned in other videos on this channel, um, subscribe for more of those, please, is that the wing backs are 1v1. So you don't have this overload that sometimes you get against teams who play wing backs. So they've got, they're gonna have a five back here. And then when Denmark push forward with this, you know, you're matched up man for man. So you've got, you've got that kind of not advantage, but you don't have a disadvantage with numbers. But the thing is, uh, England man for man, I would say, are the better team. Denmark are a very strong side. England have the better players. When I mean, you've got Kane, I think Sancho might play. It could be Phil Foden, but we'll go with this. Sterling's one of the players of the tournament. Shaw's been excellent. Maguire's been excellent. Phillips and Mount have been superb. Rice has been uh, very good as well. Now, a few things to think about in the shape that they choose. We know that Heuberg is the main creative threat. Uh, so you want to shut him down. So you could play midfield three, and have Mount, rather than having Mount as his 10, have him as this side here, uh, and then just make him get quite tight to Hoiberg whenever you can. So when England push up the pitch, you're gonna have Sancho, Sterling, Shaw's gonna come up, and then Mount, in case of turnovers, or regardless, when say Denmark are playing out for the back, say Denmark have the ball, Mount can stay tight to Hoiberg, just annoy him, just keep tight, don't let him give him any space, don't let him dictate the play. And that's gonna help. No end. Now, the, the defender's gonna be Maguire and Stones. Uh, Maguire's very useful for set pieces defending. That's something they have to really think about. This could be a very tight game. Um, Denmark are gonna be scared of Sterling's pace and Sancho's dribbling or Foden's dribbling. And they'll target, I think England will target this side of the pitch. This is where they're gonna target. Now, Mala is this uh, right-footed wing back we're talking about. Vestergaard is the guy that plays for Southampton and there is a mistake in him. There is a mistake in Vestergaard. He's great at getting rid of the ball with his head because he's massive, but also um, I think England will look to try and get channel balls into this sorts of area. So Walker will look to try and get the ball into these sorts of areas between the wing back and the center back. And then Sancho can, if it is him, is gonna be able to run and just, just cause an upset. If Sancho can get him 1v1, there is every chance that he draws a foul in, these, in, in the box. That's, it's not going to be a set tactic, but it'll be something that whoever plays this position, is it Sancho? Let's give Foden a little shot. If it's Foden, if he comes back in, it's the kind of thing they're going to be able to win free kicks in these areas or, or penalties from a mistake from Vestergaard. They will target that area. Uh, Kerr and Christensen are a bit more reliable. Christensen will try and play out from the back. 
So if, you're, if you time your press right, there's every chance they can win the ball off Christensen. But what you're gonna see is that Shaw, Maguire, Stones and Walker are gonna pretty much always stay um, in this four here. They're gonna stay and keep this bit of the pitch safe. That is to protect against counter-attacks. And by doing that, it means that you've got Rice who can support them in, in here. You can have Phillips moving into these areas here to support the wide right. Mount is going to be able to move into these positions and be near Hjoiberg to stop him. And Sterling's going to look to get in behind. And possibly, if there's a chance, he'll try and join Kane in these areas here, which then might let Shaw move over here. If Shaw does move like here, I'd imagine this will happen. They'll build the back three like this with Rice to connect it all. So you've got this lovely diamond shape. And that just gives you a bit more protection against the counter-attacks that Denmark are going to want to use. And they'll get, one of the things that um, Denmark were doing against Czech Republic was getting Heuberg into these sorts of areas here on the right, and he was looking for long balls over the top for these guys to chase. And that's what England have to be aware of. Another thing they might do, uh, it's unlikely, but I can see it happening, is because of the midfield two, joined by Christensen, very defensive, is they could even take out uh, one of the attacking midfielders, the same mount comes out, and they could give our old pal Jordan Henderson the game. He came off the bench at the end, he's not been fit, so there's a chance he won't start. I mean, it's a good chance he won't start. But this would be a very hard-working midfield. This guy, not worrying about creating, it's just going to be about shutting down Hoiberg, getting rid of this threat here, maybe helping out in these situations here. So if Larson does push up, Henderson comes across and deals with it. However, Henderson tends to play on the right for Liverpool. So when he's here, that's probably where he'd be. Phillips is here, and that's why I don't think it'll be what happens, because Phillips has been very good going into these positions on the right rather than on the left. It's a choice. It's something that Southgate might do. Uh, I'm not sure it will happen. If England do get an early lead, and that's something they've pushed for quite a lot, um, you'll probably find Grealish comes on later on, maybe for Sterling, just to control the game, and that's when you'll see him there. Uh, but I wouldn't imagine he'd start, because they want the pace of Sterling on the left. And if Foden plays here, it's probably going to be Sancho. And the reason for that is that Sancho is right-footed and can go outside or inside rather than always coming on to his left. And so that gives England a bit of variety in their attacks and it's, going to, it's just going to cause a few more problems for them, especially if they do end up with this midfield or defensive diamond at the back here. This is the diamond. Um, it means that Sancho can give them the wide right width that they need. If it's Foden who's left-footed, he's going to come more inside and you, you lose some of that width there. So... I'd imagine England are going to play in the 4-3-3 because they are the better side, they have the better attacking players. It's going to be very conservative. You're going to see the back four stay quite tight as this four here like this with Rice protecting them. Then it's down to who plays in midfield. Mason Mount is a superb player and I'd imagine he'll start with Phillips. Um, like this here. You're going to have Sterling on from the start. Grealish might come on later on to, to help him out and that'll allow, allow Shaw to overlap if that's what they want to do. So England have a really good chance of reaching the final as long as they don't underestimate how strong Denmark are. Because remember, only Spain and Italy have had more shots on goal per game. Uh, they finish their chances. They win a lot of aerial duels. We see the numbers there, 21.81 per game. Um, they're a really good side. They've got strength and depth. They've got a really strong goalkeeper. They're playing some nice football. Great team spirit. Uh, which might sound quite nebulous, but it's definitely really important in how they're playing in this tournament. And yeah, height, speed, power, skill, creativity, good movement, clever players. Hjoiberg's creating loads of stuff. Um, but England have good players, and they should probably win. So good luck to England, and good luck to Denmark. For a limited time only, you can now get The Athletic for £1 per month for six months. During the Euros, we've had guest articles from the likes of Yaya Torre, Scott McTominay and Emma Hayes to add to the work of our writers David Ornstein, Michael Cox, Amy Lawrence and many, many more. The Athletic is home to some of the best football coverage online. Plus, you can watch TIFO videos and listen to TIFO podcasts on the app completely ad-free. So, join us at The Athletic today and sign up for £1 per month for six months. Thank you for watching today's video.